and welcome to Green Roofing, blending built environments with nature to maximize rooftop productivity. This is course number IBD07F. My name is Angie Derman, principal and owner at AD Green Roof. I'd like to thank you for attending this educational CEU course. Now, let's begin the program. Babcock Davis presents AIA and IBEC Continuing Education Service Program. Credits earned upon completion of this course will be reported to AIA CES for AIA members. Certificates of completion for both AIA members and non-AIA members are available upon request. Credits earned upon completion of this course should be self-reported to IBEC CES for IBEC members. Certificates of completion for both IBEC members and non-IBEC are available upon request. This course is registered with AIA and IBEC CES for continuing professional education. As such, it does not include content that may be deemed or construed to be any approval or endorsement by the AIA or IBEC for any material of construction or any method or manner of handling, using, distributing, or dealing with any material or product. This course will introduce the basics of vegetated roof construction and how the industry has documented successful installations over the last 25 years. We will teach the design requirements and standards, explain the benefits of the technology, and provide project examples. Sections 2 and 3 will cover the uses and benefits, and finally we'll wrap up the course, taking you through performance and maintenance. We consider vegetated roofs on a holistic level, consistently thinking of the impacts for the designer, the owner, the environment, and the budget. This presentation is designed to reflect these holistic points of view. Today's categories include vegetated roofs, stormwater management, biosolar, rooftop agriculture, sustainable building integration, monitoring and maintenance. Within these categories, we'll be discussing design, benefits, performance parameters, standards, and project ideas. So, let's think about rooftops. What do you want from your roof? Simply put, a roof must be designed to provide a long-lasting, watertight system. But we can consider additional uses for this space. Like adding PV, solar, a roof can produce electricity. A roof can save energy by using cool roofs and green roofs. By installing daylight tubes and skylights, the roof can bring natural light into the interior. Roofs can be designed to manage stormwater and collect rainwater for reuse in other parts of the building. Many roofs are designed to be aesthetically pleasing um, outdoor space for the building tenants. And even a newer discovery is utilizing valuable rooftop space to create urban farms to grow food. Vegetated or green roofs are one of the technologies that fit into the green infrastructure and living architecture industries. Green architecture or green infrastructure, excuse me, is defined as bringing living, resilient vegetation to the built environment, which provides natural solutions to the challenges of the gray development. There are many benefits of green roofs, and we will talk about how to design to meet these benefits. As we install green roofs, building owners may see energy savings, therefore reduce the building costs. As plants evapotranspirate, they improve the air quality, cool the environment, and utilize rain during stormwater events. Because green roof temperatures mimic the ambient air temperature, they reduce the urban heat island. As these benefits are well documented with peer-reviewed scientific research, LEED has recognized them as a way to achieve credits for um, 
Green roofs cover traditional watertight system, protecting from UV rays, temperature fluctuations, and physical protection from hail, for example. So build, the building owner would also recognize the membrane longevity up to double the life of the traditional roof, if not even longer. And lastly, in my opinion, looking down on a green roof is more aesthetically pleasing than a black roof or a dirty white roof. We have four main categories of vegetated roofs and by using the terms you get a better sense of the expectations of what you're either trying to design or um, uh, expect for you as a building owner. An extensive green roof is the most basic system with limited soil depth and utilizes low maintenance plants, often without permanent irrigation. Extensive green roofs are also the least expensive and the easiest to maintain overall. A semi-intensive system adds a few more inches of soil which increases the opportunity to provide a more robust planting palette. Green roofs can be installed on slopes as well. This log cabin photo was taken on a serene lake in Wisconsin. Intensive green roofs on the other hand are designed to more mimic a typical park and may include trees, vines, sitting areas, permanent irrigation, and a detailed maintenance plan. Let's go over the typical assembly of an extensive green roof. Um, regardless of what kind of green roof you might be interested in, these are the essential components that will be required. Of course, the water system, waterproofing system is the base layer. We add a root barrier to keep roots from penetrating the waterproofing. A drainage layer allows water to freely flow off the roof, yet retains some water for the plants. A filter fabric is added so growing media won't clog the drainage layer. Growing media is the specialized blend of soil used for rooftop applications. In an extensive green roof, this most simple kind, we can usually use three to four inches of growing media for the, for the drought tolerant plants. And finally, the drought tolerant vegetation. In most simple roofs, succulents are planted and the most popular genus is sedum. Now we're gonna go over some waterproofing options. So depending on the roof deck type, whether it's concrete, steel, or wood, we have options that are compatible under green roofs. A no VOC rubber roof is a popular spray that's used easily as a second roof layer over an existing membrane. Hot and cold applied rubberized asphalt are common waterproofing systems throughout Division 7 and are designed to have water standing on them. Single ply roofs such as PVC and TPO are inherently root resistant, making them good options as well. We will discuss leak detection a few times throughout this presentation. Some membrane manufacturers requ require leak detection this photo shows a fastener pattern for insulation and a mesh screen grid that is overlaid before the single ply roof is fully adhered. Drainage types. Well, there are many drainage types, uh, drainage products available on the market. Some have been repurposed from the traditional waterproofing manufacturers. Uh, most of these drainage layers are gonna be loose laid they come in sheets or rolls. Um, they pr their principal mechanism is to hold the water and allow the water, the rain wall, the rainwater, to discharge when the growing medium is fully saturated. Air movement under the growth media helps keep the insulation dry in an er inverted roof membrane assembly. Drainage options included here um, <clears throat> could be something like a porous mat 
granular media, or a rigid drainage board. We also have modular systems with the built-in drainage. Some systems allow for water retention for the plants as well. In this photo, a rigid, drain, a rigid drainage board is used to support drainage aggregate, which are the little gray particles, with the filter fabric to separate the growing media from this drainage aggregate. The filter fabric prevents fine sediments from growing from the growing media into the drainage mat, which can clog the drains. This fabric is typically lightweight, water resistant, poly or polyester fiber mats, non-woven and non-biodegradable. It's an inexpensive component and is often attached to the drainage product. Growing media blends have been improved tremendously in the last 15 years. They are a highly engineered soil unique to the industry. Growing media is designed to not blow away or need yearly amending. It is critical to long-term plant establishment and survival, short uh, stormwater retention, drainage capacity, and saturated weight of the system. Testing agencies like use the FLL and ASTM guidelines to certify or accept the, the growing media blends. Because there is usually moisture within the growing media, it can provide fire resistance. And it also adds to the insulation factors and protecting waterproofing or the roofing system. Now it's time to consider the plant palette. There are temperature extremes on the roof, so we will need to pick the right kind of plants for the right place. Factors will eliminate the use of certain species or will dictate the need for irrigation. We must research environmental conditions created by each roof microclimate and consider the maintenance budget when we create a plant list. Horticulturists use the USDA plant hardiness zone map to help dictate decisions on what plant material will work in the right climate. There are approximately 15 zones across the continental US that are dictated by low wintertime temperatures. We also have 12 plant heat zones in the US, so hottest temperatures that we can expect in the summertime, for example. We mentioned microclimate in the previous slide. Cities can be seven to 10 degrees warmer than in the surrounding unbuilt natural land around them. So you can, um, the hardiness zone might be a little warmer within the city. In addition to the temperature fluctuate, in addition to the temperature factors, we also evaluate plant selection based on irrigation needs, growing media depth, sun and shade, and the maintenance budget. Once the plant list has been approved, there are several options to specify establishment. Native plugs come from, um, they're rooted in a flat and are individually planted. Sedum cuttings can be thrown on the growing media for quick rooting in place. Seeds can provide a lot of diversity for little cost. However, they take longer to establish and they might actually blow away before they germinate. We also use sedum pre-grown mats and modules for instant gratification on extensive green roofs. This is an example of native plugs on a roof in Nebraska. They were planted by, uh, they were planted by hand in June and with irrigation, the plugs quickly established themselves the first summer. And by late August, the plant material was growing up to three feet with some species. They also attracted, uh, they also flowered and attracted many insects and pollinators. Going back to envisioning 
the, the roof program, it's important to keep in mind the equipment that's permanently installed and, des and we have to design around it. Inevitably, there are going to be curbs that will have a transition detail from the curb to the vegetated area, uh, along with the membrane flashing details for the membrane. Fully insulated curbs and cover a high R value insulation are preferred. When specifying a roof hatch, you'll want to make sure to match the curb to the application. The standard curb height is 12 inches. A typical roof system has approximately 4 inch inches of insulation, and the green roof overburden has at minimum an additional 4 inches above the membrane. Designers usually want to have the lid at least 8 inches above the finished grade of the roof system. Most manufacturers will off offer a curb height 6 to 48 inches for roofs with varying insulation and for the, for the varying insulation and soil depths. New products should have high efficiency, thermal resistance, thermal break, high solar reflective index, and in some cases, they can be translucent to provide natural daylight into the interior. Now that we've introduced most products to consider on the roof, we can fully design a green roof based on the holistic knowledge of the site. Here are some of the factors. Climate, specifically rainfall and temperature. Strength and support of the structure. Most extensive green roofs are designed for about 30 pounds per square foot dead load, which is slightly more than a gravel ballasted roof. The size, slope, height, and direction of the, uh, the roof is important. The type of underlying waterproofing and roof deck type. The drainage elements, uh, where the roof drains are gutters, downspouts, scuppers, those types of things. They might either contribute to extra water for the green roof or work with those areas for transition details. Uh, most, fact, most municipalities now have some sort of a stormwater volume requirement accessibility and intended use of the rooftop space. Another factor is compatibility with the owner and the architect's aesthetic designs and needs. Integration of other green components such as solar, daylight harvesting, and biodiversity. And then of course the budget, cost of labor, and standards and guidelines. FM Global 1-35 Property Loss Prevention Data Sheet is often used for, to, um, to, for certain insured public buildings. They provide general recommendations for selecting and installing vegetated roof systems in the areas where wind design less than 100 miles per hour and where it's not susceptible to wild land fire. ANSI Spry Wind and Fire Codes from 2017 meet FM 1-35 where, as an example, no area of green roof can be uh, designed more than 15,625 square feet and each section of vegetated roof can be no greater than 125 feet. FLL are the original German guidelines for designing green roofs. The planning, execution, and upkeep of green roofs was translated in English in 2002. And all American standards, ASTM, NRCA, FM Global, are based off the FLL guidelines. LEED and USGBC. As I mentioned previously, a holistic approach to design is key to a successful, resilient green roof. As such, a variety of professionals play specific roles in making green roofs successful and communications essential. So for example, water used and saved on a vegetated roofs. We can look into the lead credits and integrative, uh, integrative process, water related systems, and rain management could be used in the narrative. 
Habitat restoration in the built environment can not only improve the ecosystems, but can also increase the human desire to enjoy the rooftop space. So we can look into the lead credits such as site development, protecting and restoring habitat, open space, and heat island reduction. Um, monitoring the performance of vegetated roofs in the region, you can get an innovation credit for that as well. Now we'll look at the importance of stormwater management and how green roofs alleviate runoff from the rooftops to the rushing streets into the streets. During a typical rain event, in this case 0.4 inches over three hours, rainfall will hit the roof and run off almost immediately. Obviously, traditional roof design has egress designed for the internal drains, scuppers, or downspouts to move water quickly off the roof. In this particular study that we have up here on the, on the screen, the research looked at a typical gravel ballasted roof compared to a green roof that was unplanted and one that was fully grown. What we see is the water leaves the roof relatively quickly from the gravel roof. An unplanted green roof captured a little bit of the rain, but still ran off similar to the gravel ballasted roof. So now we can see the effect of vegetation really is important to retaining water from the roof. Nearly 95% of the storm was captured on the planted roof. We should take note that the green roof was maintained with healthy vegetation ready to uptake the rain. Smart architecture equals smart stormwater design. So taking into account a new construction, if we have the same area to deal with, we have, a, we have the building here on the left uh, using half of the land to develop and manage um, stormwater. The requirement for the district uh, is gonna vary across the country. So we look at um, the best, manage best management practices to manage stormwater. The traditional design in this building here on the left allowed for 36,000 gallons to manage on site. This translates to roughly $200 um, per square foot for construction costs, and the managing of the stormwater is about $4.50 a gallon. If we take the building here on the, on the right, we have a blue roof area and a blue-green hybrid roof also using um, a little, little bit of the underground storage. The building on the right uses about 80% of the land to develop on, and they use a combination of different rooftop applications plus underground storage, and they're able to manage on this, this building 54,000 gallons, which translates to $185 per square foot in construction costs and roughly $2.15 a gallon for stormwater management. So I just introduced a hybrid green roof. Well, what is that exactly? It's a combination of holding stormwater within and below the traditional green vegetated roof. This is a cross-section reference of a hybrid roof designed to maximize managing stormwater and controlling the rate, of t rate and time of the runoff. This roof is using obviously waterproofing and leak detection and a specialized drain board that holds 1.1 inch stormwater below the growing media and hardscapes. This slide also shows the, um, trans the transition between a wall detail and the gravel ballasted roof before the green roof. And then in general on these particular hybrid roofs or blue roofs, uh, water is held back using a smart drain.
mother control drain for blue and hybrid roofs. So this is a uh, called a rain bank, and basically it is the internal drains are covered by this control uh, drain called the rain bank, which allows the rain to temporarily be held on the roof. Controls are programmed to open the drains based on the building needs, probably regarding structure load and local weather forecast. So if we're not expecting to have rain for the next three days, the stormwater system can release the, um, the water and go into the natural uh, sewer systems in each particular city. It works very well in areas with snow loads as a temporary load, uh, requires minimal site modifications, and it's probably the most cost-effective solution to manage stormwater. Electric field vector mapping. An electric field is established by applying water on the roof and using the conductive medium. Any water infiltration creates a vector which can then be measured by a trained roofing technician. The low voltage water detection method creates an electronic um, potential difference between the non-conductive me membranes and the conductive structural deck, which is earthed or grounded. Lastly, managing stormwater on the roof provides many benefits to the building owner and the environment. However, you know, we recognize that at-grade applications are attractive to some developers. So I put a photo here of a construction site where the uh, water retention is in front of Ikea. It's a 555,000 gallon storage. Um, it was a custom-built tank and then they put surface parking over it. Uh, now I'll talk about biosolar and explain the benefits, system design, and project ideas. Biosolar integrates vegetated roofs within a solar panel rail system. The benefits to the PV panel is going to be improved efficiency because the plants underneath it are evapotranspirating, cooling the area around it. And in return, the PV panels end up shading um, some of the plants, which allows for more water retention and keeping some of the plants a little healthier. New, it's new to the uh, to the United States. This is, happens to be a project about 2,200 square feet. The entire rooftop space is only about 4,000 square feet. Uh, we were able to get about a 5 kW system on this small site. Uh, it's the first of its kind in the upper Midwest. It happens to be in downtown St. Paul, Minnesota on a historic building. It's a, the private business owner really wanted to maximize the rooftop space and get as many lead credits as possible on the zero lot line development. So really biosolar was the best uh, technology to use here. Communication among the trades is incredibly important when we're talking about biosolar. In most cases, solar PV and green roofs compete for the same rooftop space. In applications, such as using this historically old building to upgrade to LEED certification, credits become rather limited. Biosolar allows for a better narrative. So when biosolar is designed and installed, the general contractor, design team, and industry experts need to be on the same page. For example, solar is communicated in metric units, kilowatts. However, construction is communicated in American standard, square feet. Timing of planting the uh, living vegetation and installing the PV panels is critical for both the contractors and successful product delivery. The project used uh, pre-grown sedum that you can see here that are underneath the rail systems, and the sedum was put down before the panels. The solar installer was able to walk on the plants to complete their work. 
The only minor damage was done to the sedum, and due to that time of year, it was later on in the growing season, so minimum amount of damage was done by foot traffic. In dense urban cities, land is hard to come by, so utilizing rooftops for food production can be highly profitable with a high return on investment. Most rooftop ag farms incorporate a roof amenity space to gather. This is a community building in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where they have a rooftop farmer's market. Uh, they do grow a few herbs on the roof, and half of it is for growing the herbs, and the other half is, is in the extensive sedum um, that you see here with uh, beehives for the pollinators and rain barrels to manage runoff from an upper roof above the elevator. You can also notice the hand drill design and the use of hardscapes here. This is a project called Brooklyn Grange. It's in New York City and it's about a one and a half acre um, agricultural roof. There is permanent irrigation, rolling vegetable beds, unique farm equipment that uh, does not affect the waterproofing, so you know we can't have tillers and things like that up there. <laughs> in addition to growing food production for their CSAs, which are community supported agriculture, they are able to generate revenue by hosting events such as weddings, yoga classes, garden workshops, open, ho open houses and tours, and farm dinners. While this is an excellent use of space in New York City, smaller scale farms are popping up across the country. And as we talk about growing media, going back to that topic, they actually have specialized blends of growing media that has more or higher organic content and different nutrients specifically to grow vegetables and herbs up on these rooftops. Vegetables require pollinators such as bees, butterflies, moths, hummingbirds, and other small insects. It's important to incorporate the roof with native perennials in, or in the surrounding vegetable beds. Natives will flower and act as resources to the bees and butterflies. Native perennials here include Asclepius, Allium, Coreopsis, and Liatris. Now we're gonna talk about maintenance and monitoring. We'll go over the benefits, the performance parameters, and some project ideas. Once a green roof is incorporated into the building, it becomes an item to maintain. And we have two main types of maintenance programs. Short-term maintenance occurs in the first two years to establish the desired plants and limit weed pressure. The short-term maintenance is usually early and often going up to the roof and making sure the things that we want to have growing are growing and we pull the things that we don't want to have growing. Long-term maintenance is more inspections and weed management. So we've established the plant material, there might be some diversity in coverage over time, but for the most part, everything that wants to be growing there will be growing there. Most system warranties are tied to some recorded maintenance program. So uh, it might be a two year to begin with, but then long term, a warranty might become void if there's no maintenance on the green roof. Vegetative roofs usually have some access to water and irrigation, either like as, as needed or on a permanent basis. 
Short-term maintenance may use tripods or in, in a larger application to establish the sedum, and that's shown here on the right side. You could also set this up with a garden hose and an oscillator as well. Temporary tripods attach um, to a normal hose bib in the, at the building, and regarding hose bibs, it's important that uh, it's specified at minimum 40 psi, so we have enough water pressure coming out to irrigate across the field of the roof. Permanent irrigation, on the other hand, should have covered PVC pipes, access to control boxes, uh, clean emitters, and also the permanent irrigation will need to be winterized on an annual basis in many parts of the country. This too is a coordination with the irrigation contractor and overburden installer. It should also be designed early on in the system to know if we are having permanent irrigation, what kind of plants can we grow in addition to the drought tolerant plants. Since we're getting access to the rooftops every couple of weeks during the growing season for maintenance, it's best to uh, specify a roof hatch using, or, excuse me, it's best to access these areas using a hatch or a door via staircase, elevator, or ladder. It's important to use OSHA's fall safety requirements and ideally rails would be specified. OSHA codes for guardrail systems can be used around the holes and fall protection uh, systems are up here in the codes up here. Another option for providing rooftop railings is the permanent mounted solution. They are custom and des they're designed specifically for the roof. Uh, they are installed under the coping and roof flashings provide continual protection from falls. If these options are not available, a crew can still use a safety monitor for regular maintenance during the growing season. As always, we're creating living systems and green roofs will change over time and across the seasons. They are rarely only green. Temperature extremes will cause the color to change and may ultimately eliminate the use of certain species and or dictate the need for irrigation. The bottom photo to the left is an establishing roof using sedum plugs. This picture was taken in a, when it was about a month old and it's under its short term maintenance plan to control weeds in the bare areas. We started off the presentation explaining the overall benefits of green roofs. We have shown many particular applications of how you can design your roof to meet those benefits. Once a building owner is sold on a particular roof, they are sometimes inquisitive as to how it's performing over time. We have the ability to fit a green roof with environmental instruments to measure climate, water management, temperature fluctuations, and access data using cellular connections and solar power. While these research stations rarely generate data that can be peer reviewed by a scientific panel, a lot of the data is gonna be highly important to the local watershed or the public agency interested in getting this data. The particular client is uh, shown here as a municipality and they were curious if there is a change in the water runoff comparing an eight inch growing media depth to a 16 inch. Uh, this happens to be an intensive courtyard roof. So you can see the trees in the background, uh, some shrubs and other, um, ornamental plants. The study here had buried instruments within the two soil depth profiles. The bar graph shows a year of the study. The orange bar represents the conventional roof runoff. The light green represents the 8 inch growing media water management 
and the 16 inch depth is in the dark green. While the entire presentation uh, could be created just on explaining this data, in a nutshell, the takeaway is that there's not a significant difference in managing runoff between 8 inches and 16 inches of soil depth. So if maximizing stormwater management is your goal, you might be better off exploring a hybrid roof or which should eliminate the high structural load cost required of a 16 inch growing media profile. We have reached the end of the slide presentation portion of this presentation. You are now fully prepared to understand the basics of vegetated roof design, convey the benefits of green roof technology to your clients. You can see how green roofs can be used within your projects and explain performance and maintenance. Thank you for your time today. If we can answer additional questions, we can assist you on your project in the future, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.